Thanks so much for being here at Millionaire Insiders. I'm so excited to have Bruce Poontip back on the show. I know the first one we talked ton of information, especially about finding your purpose. He's author of a book called Loop Tale and also owner of a company called G Adventures, which is a kick-ass travel company. So what I want to get into today, though, is really about finding your purpose, because he really talked about how important it was. And I know a lot of you are sitting there going, great, I don't know how to do that. So Bruce, thanks so much for being here right now. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So First, if there's anybody, I mean, some people are in corporate jobs, some people are in a business right now, but a lot of everybody listening right now doesn't, can't like pinpoint their purpose right now. Like if you ask them, they're, you know, usually people blather, like, uh, maybe it's like this. How did you get so clear on what your purpose is? Well, you have to spend time on it. I mean, I think that we get so busy that people don't actually, and people get scared because they think it's being, you know, it's, 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 it goes into that self-help realm and it's not, it, and it's, it's not suitable to that. We like as entrepreneurs and we like to think we're aggressive in business and we're, we're all that, but, and, and, you know, business is about, you know, about self-evaluation, about getting better and stronger and getting faster as a business. In order to do that, you have to be able to self-evaluate to, 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 to make sure you cover your weaknesses or, or find what, find where you're weak where your weaknesses are and, and make sure you make them as strengths. So, you know, in order to find your purpose, I mean, I don't think it's really that hard, but you, you do have to consciously change the way you think because you have to be, you have to spend time on it and you have to just look and see. And it's, and I think it's complicated for people because people think of it in a grand sense, as opposed to narrowing it down to their lives, like narrowing it down to the small parts of their lives, whether, because you have different purposes between what your purpose is for your family and then you narrow it even down there. It's a different relationship with your parents and your siblings and your kids and your husband. All of those things. That you, but you should understand what your what your relationship is with all of those different relationships that add pressure to your life or add, you know, whatever, you know, that are part of your life. And understand. And then when you decide you want to start a business or, you, you know, the job that you want to, it, every, every decision you make reflects on everything else. Because if you're unhappy in your job, or you, you know, you have to spend all this time separating your work and your life because your job is so horrible. That energy is wasted, and it, it, it filters right down to all the other parts of your and relationships in your business. So you have to be, you know, find passion in what you do. In order to do that, you have to know what you're passionate about, and, and you have to, have to spend some time thinking about it. So what does that time look like? Because I know a lot of the times we'll be like, okay, great, but what do we do? Just sit there and think? Do we meditate on it? What do we do to sort of spend that time to really go into it? Well, I think I think everybody's different. I mean, meditation is great. I, I, I mean, even, I'm a big yoga practitioner. I, I'm not I'm not pitching yoga here, but I mean, I, I in any way because lots of people like lists. I know lots of people that write lists and like to just sit down and you know, especially if you're a Virgo, the people just love to write lists. Um, but maybe that's that's um, for, uh, for different people, but in, in, any, in any way, you need to gather your thoughts, right? And you, 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 know, you have to start with a circle, with yourself in the middle, and then you start by putting all of the different relationships you have in the world that are in your little world. You create your own little circle around you because your world is, it circles around you. Your happiness is at the core of you. Everything else around you has to be able to reflect on that. So as I said, on that, in, in that little circle, you might have your uh, friends, you'll have, and maybe you might even want to get more personal with your old school. You know, some people have friends, oh, I knew this person since I was, you know, in kindergarten, even though we have nothing in common anymore, we're kind of stuck together for life. And then some people have more recent friends, people have um, kids, their siblings, brothers and sisters, their parents, their husbands or wives, and then you can go right around, um, then, then your employer and maybe your immediate manager, all of those people who have direct access to you and, um, and somehow impact your life, you have to create the purpose in that relationship. And once you've got kind of documented on a piece of paper um, and know all the, who all those people are and how you then start working on the individual relationships of what that purpose is. Like if your purpose with your boss is to make him look good and to perform at a certain level, we achieve results, make sure you hit your deadline. That's your purpose, but maybe you have a, and, and then once you know that, maybe you can work on creating a better relationship with your boss that's on a more intimate level where you can, you know, get to know a little bit about where they come from, what their motivations are, do, you know, know their, their triggers and, and creating a bit more of a, a relationship that you can go beyond just work. And it's not necessary, but it, 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 it you know, in order 
for you to achieve happiness. You have to have that connectedness with people. You can't just work for someone you have no connection to. I don't believe you can't do that anymore. You can do a good job, but you can't be happy doing it. And that's why people get into this trick of, um, or it's, it's, I think it's kind of a, more of a disease really, that people have to separate their work and life and personal life. This work-life balance means work is here, and then I cut it off at five o'clock, and then I go home, and this is my personal life. If you don't have the integrity, you know, integrity and is you know short for the same word as integration, integrating all parts of your brain, so you can everything flows. Like that's how some people can work for a tobacco company or you know work for um, you know a, a mining company, and then go home and then you know recycle, and teach their kids how to recycle and do you know things like this. Um, because you have to separate these things in your brain, right? You have to have, and that lacks integrity because you don't have the integration. Um, and that's a very, that wastes a lot of energy. It's a very difficult and horrible way to live. Um, and I think that with when you are able to integrate those two things together in your life and you're able to truly um, love what you do, no matter what it is you do, you have to create that connectedness of the people. And you have to find the purpose in all those relationships that exist in work. And, and they have to blend together. Like you can't have integrity of, of this boss um, and then have a completely different relationship with how you connect with your brothers and sisters. I mean, it, it, you, you mean your, the connection with your brothers and sisters is obviously going to be way, way deeper, way more personal. But there should be a framework of core values in which you operate. And that's your grid. You know, that's your grid of how you run your life. That's your moral you know, fiber. That's you know, what your existence. And that's what creates your grid because everyone thinks differently. Now, some people are very, very, you know, um, aspirational or uh, aspirational based and they, you know, want to achieve, you know, um, and, you know, money really drives them. There's nothing wrong with that, but just make sure you understand where it fits in your grid and how it affects every, you know, aspect of your little circle, your little world. And make sure there's integrity between all of them, that they all don't, they, they all work together. There's nothing wrong with achieving your dreams and being aggressive and going after, you know, um, you know, whatever it is you want to be, that, that, that you value as successful, but make sure you understand it. Some people, you know, value helping others and doing charity work and, and doing, um, not, and work for nonprofits their whole lives. And some people work for banks or, and, and, or Wall Street and go after, you know, money means a lot to them. I'm not saying that either one of those is right or wrong, but just make sure it reflects your grid. Make sure it reflects across all of your you're, you're, you know, around your purpose, which is every everyone and everything that's in contact with you. So you don't create those separations, that lack of integrity in your mind. You, okay, I'm going to deal with my parents this way. I'm going to deal with my job this way. And I'm going to cut, cut, put a line between work and home life because this is my personal life. This is my work life. I don't answer my phone after five. I don't, and I'm not, I'm not, because work-life balance, many, many, many people um, say that it's about, you know, cutting off work or not working long hours. I mean, I'm not a big person about working long hours, but you should love what you do. And if you at times have to pull long hours, you should be more than willing to do it because that's what makes people successful. If you have to cut off at five and shut off your phone at five and I don't have anything to do and I'm going on to my personal real life, that's a very weird way to, to live, I find. So, so you do it. listening to what you're saying too, I want to get your definition of purpose because a lot of the times people will go, okay, this sentence right here, that's my life's purpose and we distill it down. But what it sounds like you're saying is we have a whole bunch of different things um, and we want to make sure they're in alignment. Yeah, it, it, it actually it boils down to more core values. Than okay. You know, your, your, your purpose comes out of your core values. What's important to your values? Like I, as I said, some people, you know, our core values as a company is about, you know, we have five distinct core values about changing people's lives, doing the right thing, um, creating happiness, community, all these things that are important that drive our relationships as a company. And so, you know, when you put those down, I mean, I'm, there's, there's, there's no specific number, but it should be very evident once, once you kind of start mapping out all of the different people and all the different relationships and what's important. But there's no reason why you should have, you know, okay, my relationship with my brother and my uh, mom or dad is, you know, is, is this, but when I'm at work, it's that. It should, they should be aligned. It should all work together. Okay. And that's when you start narrowing down your purpose. How do you find those core values? Like, I know your company has that. How did you find that? How did I find it for the company? Yeah, and for I, you. I'm I, sure you have them too. I, I flew in 17, that was three groups of 17 people randomly selected from around the world. <laughs> from Africa, India, Asia, every, like everyone came from all over the world. I, I flew them to Vegas, you can believe it. And, and we sat in our room and I said, what's important to you with this company? Like, and I 
because I didn't know. I lost my own kind of sense of. Um, I asked everyone, you know, what is your purpose and what what is important um, to you? What do you see our customers? Because they also deliver our services to our customers. What's important to them? And we distilled it down to five, you know, very like ours aren't even sentences because I have another challenge is that I have cultures and people from all over with different languages. So I couldn't like I mean I I saw I, I met, met the CEO of Netflix and their core values was 14 pages long. 14 pages, single spaced, huge, right? And I said, uh, if you were a cook on a truck for us in Africa, you would not be able to understand 14 pages of course. You know, if you, you know, we have people in Mongolia, I mean, we, we have to distill it to very simple, basic things that drive our, what, you know, what we believe is a company. But it shouldn't, the process shouldn't be any different than in your lives. Like what's important, like some, when you say what's important to relationships or people or your life or, you know, what you want to achieve, you put all those things together. I mean, people are just all very different. Like some people, you know, integrity, honesty, loyalty are, you know, these are things that are the foundations of their existence and the foundation of anyone they associate with. But some people, you know, it's not that they, they, they don't, they don't like, they don't need those things. It's not as important. Some people want to achieve big things. They want to, um, you know, they want to, you know, have more of that change or die mentality. They want to be aggressive. They want to go after, you know, success. Their success is about, you know, aspirational and, you know, getting promotions and that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just as long as it's all aligned within your sphere and it's understood and all of that is integrated into your purpose. So if we sense? have, it, it does make sense, especially having core values. Do you have separate core values for your business or and your personal life or do you not have core values in your personal life or are they the same, one and the same? They're, they're, for me, they're the same. I mean, I have a couple, I mean, I have different things as my kids. Like I have kids um, now and they're at that age now where they, um, they, added a completely different dimension but I mean my core values are, aren't any different to how I deal with my my kids really but my kids certainly add a different dimension to my existence and my leadership and how I everything and everything that I do and so um, but how I how I manage my life and my core values with the company is, is very different to isn't very different to um, how I how I deal with my children and my family so let's say we have those core desired feelings and really start feeling what that is, how do we sort of embody them? Do you have them like up on the wall? How do you sort of remind yourself? Because sometimes people will go through like exercises, like this person told me to do this as an exercise. We do it, it sticks on our computer, never to be seen again or whatever happens. Yeah. So how do yeah. we actually implement and really embody it? Well, I mean, first of all, I would say keep, keep it very simple. I mean, if you, I mean, ours aren't even, our core values aren't even sentences, they're very few words. Um, some people just have literally words, like five, five words that mean everything to them. And, you, and, and, bef and, and when you make any decision in your life, you go through those words. Like you say, okay, you're buying a house. Does this represent, you know, everything that I, you know, everything that, 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 that's relevant for me in my life and my stage right now? And the other thing is, it's a, life, it's a life document. Once it's written, it doesn't mean it can't be changed. It's a moving, our lives are moving goalposts. I mean, they change every day depending on different things. So don't think that, okay, well, this is it today. It's a, it's, it's, it's a live document. And, and, and yeah, I mean, any way that you need to be able to remember it, I mean, the best way to do it is to keep it simple and, um, and keep them to, to, to really what your core, what is co the core that's important to you. And if someone comes to you um, with an idea or a new job and you put it through your grid of what's really core important to you, you know, it's not really, it lacks a bit of this or it's not really gonna look, you have to be strong to be able to say, you know, that's really not, doesn't fit within my, my goals. It's not fit within my purpose because you get yourselves into situations where you're, you know, it's, it's, it's an okay, you know, I, I, I see this over and over again, people who chase money and it's not necessarily the best decision for their kind of moral compass and, um, or their purpose compass. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the la that, lock, that lack of authenticity will catch up on you. It always does, and I rest comfortably knowing that um, you know when that when when people decide that that they want to go down a path that isn't necessarily within you know their their authenticity, it it it'll, it'll it'll catch up on them. It'll catch up on them eventually. So they're guides. They help you make decisions. They help you move forward. They make things probably a lot easier because once you know that these are important to you, as long as you keep following that path, um, good things usually come. Well, it, it, it's it's about creating a better version of yourself. Because you're every everyone everyone is it, 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 um, can achieve greatness. I'm a, I believe. Um, so 
you and you should be able to like these things. These things keep you focused, and they they keep your fo and and you, you were asking earlier about you know if you want to start a business, you want to do something. And you're, and you're, you're, you know, people are so fear-based because they're scared because it, it's so overwhelming. But if you have all of those things that are just so important, you distill it down to the few core things that mean something to you, it removes a lot of that fear. It remo removes a lot of that, ab that ability for you to create fear because fear doesn't really exist. We all manufacture it. But if we know that this fits, this is the right fit, this works within my values, this works within my system, I can be good at this, I can do this. It eliminates all that fear. If you're compromising, I mean, you can compromise to a certain extent. I mean, you can compromise, but if it's compromising too much and you're not comfortable, that's when fear comes in, because then you get scared, or you're scared because you don't even know what your limitations are. So that people don't do that homework at the beginning, and that's why they say, "I'm scared to start my business. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in fear." But what's important to you? What do you want to achieve? What is your purpose? You know, I want to take care of my family. I want to take care of my kids. I want my kids to go. You know, have you know. I want to make you know a certain amount of money, or I want to spend more time with my kids. Like put what some people have those things that are important. Some people want you know nice you know are motivated by free time. Some people are motivated by giving you know more to their families, to their kids. Some people have to support their families. Some people want more money to buy sports cars. Whatever it is, just be clear. But what it is, there's no right or wrong answers. Yeah. Uh, then you develop that all of the values that actually drive that success. And then you create your limit limits in which you're what you're willing to do. Because sometimes you, in business you have to make decisions that are very aggressive, very tough, and and stone cold. They lack emotion sometimes. Like when you have to fire people, or when you have to restructure, and you have to make really difficult decisions. You have to do it within your grid, and, and you have to and do it within how you feel comfortable. Or else that's what builds up all that fear, and you'll be crippled by it. I won't move forward. I love this. Thank you so much, Bruce. I really, really appreciate it. We're actually going to create a whole action guide step by step on going through and figuring out that connectedness, what those purposes are, and figuring out your core feelings, uh, your core values. So that way people can actually take something away from this. So I really, really appreciate you being here. Where can we find out more about you in general? Uh, you can go on our website for our trips for gadventures.com, gadventures with an S.com. My book, Loop Tale, um, is a bit there. You can actually look at our, our website, looptail.com, and that's L O O P T A I L, looptail.com. And it's also available on, in any bookstore or any online retailer, all those kinds of it's now, uh, It was the New York Times bestseller, and the forward was written by the, the His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. So it's been very successful and very fun to do, very fun project to write. So impressive, and everyone should pick that up today. So thank you so much for coming on today, Bruce. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed that Millionaire Insider interview. Now, the cool thing is, is that every single one of these episodes for the next eight weeks will have an action guide associated with it. So you can actually take action and you better. So go to eventualmillionaire.com slash inside and you can download the workbook right now. You can also see every new insider interview as it comes out. So again, it's eventualmillionaire.com slash inside.